Okay, uh, I'm Rui, so I'm going to be talking about the RPC framework. Um, just the building blocks, uh, it's not a complete framework. Uh, it's something I've been working on for about two years, just experimenting. Uh, it's experimental, so uh, you know, people like it, people don't like it, uh, but you'll see why. Uh, I was just experimenting with uh, how, how, how much I could push C++, um, just to you know, make serialization easier. Um, uh, like I said, this is just the building blocks, uh, not the framework on its entirety, it's just a kind of um, bag of tricks uh, that I find useful. Uh, like I said, just uh, the objective uh, experiment with uh, mostly C++11 and 14 features. Um, I'm sure 17 will make some things easier eventually, but uh, I will be expanding the framework to just try out new things. Uh, the objective was mostly how much I can push C++ and do away without the typical service definition files that most frameworks tend to require. Uh, so what you're going to see is just C++, uh, a bit of abusing the preprocessor because you need to work around some issues, um, and still an acceptable API. I mean, not too verbose, and tailored for my needs, so I don't support any other languages, just C++. Uh, the objective was, um, I'm working on a game which, like I mentioned here, multiple servers. Um, the, RPC, the RPC framework is used only internally for the backend, so communication between servers is not between the client, the game client and the server, so it doesn't need to be extra secure or anything. Uh, only C++, binary, uh, I don't need anything else, I don't need JSON. And type rich, what I mean by type rich is, is not limited to arithmetic types or vectors or strings, so you can make it any type you want, you can, uh, you can use it for the framework as long as you put in the bit of effort. And uh, trusted peers, uh, so just for the back end. Uh, let's see if I miss anything. Um, simple API, um, this is what I mean by type rich, um, not limited to predetermined types. Uh, the client can call uh, RPCs on the server, and the server can call RPCs on the client, so be directional. You're going to see two ways to handle RPCs, so basically one is uh, with a STD future, so you wait on a future, uh, the other one is a, a typical asynchronous uh, handler, just a lambda. Um, Non-intrusive, I mean, is by a, a specific class that's going to be using for a, as an RPC server, doesn't need to know about any RPCs, uh, so you can potentially grab a third-party library and kind of wrap a class and call RPCs on it. Either only, just you know, because that's the hype now, <laughs> and no external dependencies, um, just to make it easy to use. This is, a, I'm going to start with a complete sample. This is a fully functional sample. That's it, nothing else. Um, there is only a little bit which this, this, these bits, it's kind of some helper classes, but, which I'm not showing here. But as you see, um, you have a class which is, uh, doesn't know anything about RPCs. You can consider this the typical, what, you, what would be your uh, service definition file, right? Uh, you don't need anything else. Uh, a server and the client is calling one, one, RPC, one RPC and handle it with, with a future. But I will be uh, explaining how you can use all the C++ tricks to figure out how to do this in a type safe way. So if you try and um, call hat with a string, for example, it doesn't compile, so it's completely type safe. Um, right. So the typical you know, um, code flow that you need uh, for a, uh, an RPC framework, uh, in our case, we're gonna start with a compile checks uh, because I want to make it type safe. Serialize, serialize, call uh, the required function on the server, uh, serialize the results, send it back to the client, and then handle the, um, the result either with an STD future or uh, the asynchronous uh, handler. So we're going to start with uh, some tricks to make the um, compile time checks. So with for dealing, um, Let's, let's consider, for example, a specific type. Uh, if it's an int, let's say, uh, most people will know this, you can make, okay, let's suppose we have a function which um, you want to make sure that uh, 
only arithmetic types are accepted for RPCs. So it's enough. You could do this kind of thing. Uh, this is new with the 17. Actually, Visual Studio 2015 already supports this, I think. Not sure. But anyway, I'm, I'll p uh, most of the code I'll be showing is 14, but I will be using on and off just this one because it's shorter. Um, so if you want to check, for example, suppose you have, um, you want to check if a function which only has, a, has a return type and only one parameter, and you want to make sure that that function is valid for RPCs because you only want to support arithmetic types, right? So you can put together a small uh, function traits, right? And you check, okay, the, this signature is valid for RPCs if the return value is arithmetic and the argument is also an arithmetic, so it's enough. Um, I'm doing a small sample here. Um, feel free to interrupt me if you, if you have any questions. I might be going too fast. Um, so it's enough in this case for uh, arithmetic types. So we're going to be expanding this to support any types. So what do we need to know for um, uh, about the parameter type uh, for RPC for uh, for RPCs? Uh, we need to check if it's a uh, if it's a valid type. So if it's if it can be used for RPCs, that's what I meant. That some frameworks only allow you to use predetermined type predetermined types like ints, vectors. Um, so in this case, we're going to be creating a, a little class which is basically encapsulates the traits of a type, right? So. Uh, the traits for uh, you know, RPCs. So uh, you want to know if it's a valid type, if it can be used. Um, this is kind of the, the tricky part, but I'll be explaining it later. Uh, you want to know how to serialize it, how to deserialize it. And um, this is kind of related to the first one, the, the second one. Um, it's, uh, but we'll see why. So this is kind of the bare bones for what you would need to. Um, let's do twenty plus plus code, by the way. Just pseudo code. This is pseudo code. I have a friend just looking into that and he was like, "What the hell is this?" It's just pseudo code. <laughs> <laughs> so you just fill in the, fill in the blanks. Uh, so this is kind of the bare bones, but uh, we'll be showing. Um, like I said, you need to you need to know if uh, for the for a specific T if you can use it uh, in RPCs. This is going to be used later on, and the typical write, read, so this is a hypothetical stream, doesn't matter what it is. Uh, you can make it a fixed type or just a template, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, so write, the, the typical write, read, and this one, which is going to be related to this one. So let's put together the param traits for arithmetic types. Uh, <coughs> so by default, they're all all types are invalid. So you can't use anything else unless you specifically say, okay, this type is valid for RPCs. Um, so by default, um, we set it as uh, false. Valid is false. Uh, nothing can be used. Uh, this is the little trick for the SVI uh, later on when you specialize. Um, so let's uh, let's start with the uh, specializing for arithmetic types. Um, so parameter traits, um, this is enabled if T is a, an arithmetic type. Any arithmetic type will work. Of course, it's easy enough. Valid. Uh, the store type is much directly T. But again, I will explain why I need that uh, store type. Uh, write and read is enough. And this one just returns the same. So we're kind of building up, um, we'll be building up from this. Uh, so it's enough, that's how we use it. This is gonna be all little tricks that then, then you can put together to, um, to check uh, if a function is valid for RPCs. Uh, just some, some examples how you can use it. This compile, this, this doesn't compile because it's a reference, it's not supported. Well, it's also supported if you allow it. That's that's the thing. You can specialize if you want. So typically, if a given t, if you allow a given t to be used, then most likely you also want to allow a constref to be used. So you can easily specialize it. 
just the matches directly to the int, it's the same, so the specialization. Or even better, you can just make a general specialization if, if you can say it's that. Uh, so basically, for any valid T, so if T can be used uh, for RPCs, any const T ref can be used for RPCs. Um, same thing, same checks. This now is valid. This doesn't compile. We haven't deal with strings yet. And this is also valid. Now, but things get a bit more complex. Uh, vectors. Um, again, since we're building on what we did before, for any valid T, right, you already build the blocks to serialize, you know, everything about T. You know if, if it's going to be valid, if it's not. Um, so what we do, we, what I'm doing here is I just write, you know, the, how many elements, so how many elements the vector has, and then I just iterate over the elements and call the traits for, the, for T. So if T is valid, you can just serialize any vector of any valid T. Um, and this is kind of where you can optimize. So when I showed in the other slide the, let's say, the, the, the layout for parameters, no, it's a template, so it's the, the signature is not fixed, right? You can just change the signature any way you want. Um, as long as the code that's using this, uh, if it's a valid function call for the code that's calling write or read, so for example here, uh, this would probably not be necessary. Um, so I'm using ref ref. So easy enough to expand on what we did before. So any vector. Uh, so what? Why? Why I need the the, the stored type? Uh, so suppose you have a function which one uh, you want. Obviously, if you want to support strings, you want to support const char star typical C string. But you do have a problem if you're dealing with traits, which is if you if you if you if you have the parameter traits of const char t, right? It's, it's easy enough to serialize. So imagine, uh, in this case, it's, uh, suppose if t is an int, okay, let's try serialize it. Okay, you serialize from a, right? Let's try and get back, right? What you serialized. Okay, you can use the same variable, right? But if you're dealing in const, const char t, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. So you can serialize straight from the C ray style, uh, C string style, but you can't serialize to B. So the type that the function accepts, it's not necessarily the same uh, type that you need to deserialize it. So in our, in our case, in this case, um, if a function accepts a const char, a const char t, you want to deserialize to an std string. So you can't use t directly. So that's why um, a specialization for um, parameter traits uh, has this uh, type def. So the code that's going to be using this building block knows what type to use to deserialize the data. And this thing here, the get, uh, what you're going to do in um, in most cases, is accepts a store type and transforms it to what the function actually expects. So it allows you to, in this case, with a with a const uh, char st um, string, it allows you to transform from the std string back to what the function expects, which is the const char the star. Um, so this is the case, like I was about to mention. That, so dealing with the uh, typical C strings. Uh, valid store type <coughs> is going to be an std string because that's the way you, you're going to be deserializing it. And then to actually call the function on the server side, uh, you need to eventually convert it. This is, uh, I'm not sure if, in the, if, if for the for the thing would be needed because I think, no, I don't think so. Uh, I was thinking that maybe uh, when you have a function that accepts a const char star, I'm not sure if, nested, if the std string Automatically gives you the the const char star. Not it sure. Say again. It doesn't do no, it doesn't. <coughs> yeah, I wasn't sure. 
but this is a simple example, but you can potentially use this for another thing, which I'm not uh, going to explain here, which is, suppose you even want to support pointers as RPC parameters, which <coughs> is a bit of ridiculous in most cases. But with, with, the, with this layer, uh, with the parameters layer, you can actually do that. Um, so suppose you want to support uh, pointers of type, uh, I don't know, full, right? Um, what you do here is, okay, when the, the framework is going to be calling the right pointer full, uh, you would, uh, for example, map that somehow into an int, so some object ID, and you would actually send the object ID, not the pointer. And then when you're reading, you would be reading to an int, and then this would be converting back to the actual object. So basically it would give you, uh, you have the, the ID here somehow, and then it would be converting back through some maps, uh, giving you back the object that the function actually needs. So potentially you could uh, even uh, serialize uh, pointers uh, to objects. So we're going to be using now, uh, making use of the parameter traits to uh, actually validate functions uh, with several, several parameters. Um, so what do we need to know about the functions? Um, you need to know if all the parameters are valid, uh, as in uh, you want to make sure that all the types are acceptable types, you can't use any function as an RPC. Um, so parameter types and the return type need to be valid. How do you serialize all the arguments? And how do you serialize them on the server side and call that function? Again, this is pseudocode. <laughs> Uh, just some uh, some type tests, so the the um, so the framework uh, can grab you know query grab some some of the types it needs. Uh, there is something missing here that we will see. Uh, so this is where we start using the the typical variadic uh, template classes. Uh, so what this what this allows us to do is now that we that we we have everything defined for a specific type so we know if it's valid, if it's not. We just use the Riatic templates uh, to expand. Uh, you, know, you have a, a sequence of types and then you just expand and you make sure that all, all those parameters are valid. Um, and this is just a little, little helper, helper class. Uh, if you ever dealt with the Riatic templates, uh, you, you figure out that you know you call this one, or it depends on which one you end up calling first, but they just kind of you have the exit case Bit, a bit mind-boggling even for me sometimes, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it works. Um, so we're going to be needing, uh, the, so the same way we put together traits for, uh, for the parameters, uh, we need to put together a helper class for uh, the functions. Uh, so um, let's see, let's see. So the, for methods, with any number of parameters and the const methods. This is going to be the details. So we'll be having this on the next slide. Um, so let's check what we can do to, 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 to make sure a function is valid. Uh, so the return type, of course. This is easy enough to build on the other one. So if a function is valid, <coughs> if the return type is valid, and if all the parameters are valid. So you're building up on the, the blocks we, you, did, you did before. And this is uh, the, another reason I mentioned that you need a start type. So when, uh, when you're deserializing an RPC, you need some L value you know, to keep all the data. Uh, so you deserialize it into a, tu a tuple. Uh, just makes it easier instead of individual variables. I I'm not even sure if it would be possible to to somehow put it in uh, separate variables. So you put it in the tuple of this type because that's, the, that's what you need. So you can handle, for example, the pointers, uh, the, the typical C, C strings. Uh, this is just some utility code we'll see later. And so small example, I can use this. So you can, this, this little thing here will, will be used later. So you can query the, <coughs> what type the argument one is, argument zero. Uh, 
So let's put together some code to serialize um, a group of parameters. Again, um, using the, this awesome feature. Um, so what I end up doing here? Traits, traits, right? But uh, parameter traits. So for uh, so I'm just iterating. So it expands. So iterating through all the all the parameters and just calls a typical parameter traits for each one of them. Yeah, just a typical typical uh, mind-boggling templated code. <laughs> it does, it does, just uh, when, you, when you use this thing and then you have the, the, the escape one. Um, full example how to use that. So suppose you are using this class for RPCs, you want to call RPCs on this interface, let's say. Um, some hypothetical stream. And you're just saying, you're not calling a function at this point, right? You just know, I, you know the function signature, and you need the function signature so you can make sure that the user is not trying to, to pass invalid parameters to the RPC. Uh, so you just know the function signature. Um, and so, stream, uh, what parameters, right? If you pass more parameters, wrong type, because of the building blocks we did before with the param, param traits, uh, anything invalid, it will just fail to compile. Um, you can't get get it wrong there. As you see here, this will give you an error. Because when it tries, let's see if we have it here. Uh, so when is, so this is the first parameter, right? So the the building blocks will be using param, param traits of float, right? Uh, and when you pass the string here, it will be if it will be calling, it will be calling this parameter traits, right? So this be it's going to be parameter traits of float, right? So this won't compile because this write expects something acceptable for a float. If it's up to you if you want to do implicit conversion, so you can overload the write any any way you want. So it's up to you. But for of course uh, arithmetic types, just you just do, you just want to make sure you're not doing anything wrong. Uh, so in this case, this will not be accepted. You get an error. So completely type safe. Um, things get a bit more complicated now on the server side. Uh, so you need to serialize the data into a tuple, like I said. Uh, so for that, you need to again, you need to specialize this one to be able to deserialize and serialize the tuple, any arbitrary tuple. But this has a nice side effect that if you do this. The framework itself will be allowing you to actually use tuples for RPC parameters. Uh, so this is a, this is used internally uh, to deserialize everything, but the side effect is, is you can also just use tuples for uh, parameters. So again, building on the on the other things we did, uh, a tuple is valid if any of the elements types is valid. So this. This will be enough to serialize, to support any kind of tuple as long as all the, the T's are valid. Um, again, this is a nice trick. Uh, this will fail as soon as possible. I like, I like trying to make the compiler give you an error as soon as possible, instead of just um, letting it go deep, deep, the, the, the rabbit hole, and then you need to figure out where the hell the header, the header is. Uh, so if you put this one here, just checking all the all the T's. If one of them is not valid, then the tuple can't be serialized. So it just throws you an error as soon as possible. Clang is actually quite good at figuring out where the error is. Uh, Visual Studio not so not so good. It just throws a what I call a compiler stack, <laughs> and then it figure out where the where your code is. Uh, you do get over it, but but yeah, uh, I like making it just to give you the error as soon as possible. So example, again straightforward, once you have the building blocks. Uh, 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 uh. Right, so um, calling this function, 
you know, let's serialize the parameters. So let's think of it as serializing a function call. Um, serializes the parameters, and then when it's serializing, you again, you have already the traits for functions. So for this signature, you, you can store on this kind of tuple, and you just read, um, you just use the parameter traits of that type and read from the stream. Now we're going to be working on actually um, unpacking a tuple and calling a function with it. From that previous approach, yep. so we're calling bar on the food on the server, is that right? Yes. That's the idea? Yes. N not at this point yet. Uh, we we'll get there. We'll get there, but yes. What but instance of who are we calling it on? Yeah, we'll right. see that. Uh, I won't be showing all the details right. because that's kind of uh, that's the details, you know. It's like it's not not something really specific to this talk, but um, uh, I'm showing just the the, the the bag of tricks of C++. Okay. And the the way I put that together then depends on the design you want, you know, or, or you want to deal with lifetime issues. Um, but in the end, if you want, I can go back to the first slide and then I can explain some of it. You probably missed a bit in the first slide. Maybe. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so now we're going to be working on just unpacking a tuple and call a function with it. So similar, uh, if you are up to date with the, the standard library, I confess I'm not. You know, there are bits that I'm working on something and then I figure out, oh, I've never seen this before. Uh, so we should have more standard uh, library talks. Uh, so C++, seven, I think this is from 17, already has this, which basically allows you, given a tuple, you give it a, a function pointer, uh, any call. I'm not sure if it's any callable, but uh, basically, uh, in practice, you give it a function, you give it a tuple, and if that tuple matches the parameters, you, you, it calls that function. Um, we can't use that directly, um, because, again, you have these layers to go through. You need the, you're, not, uh, you're not calling the, uh, the function directly with that tuple. You need to, for every element, you need to get it through the store type so you can't, I can't use the std apply because you need kind of this extra layer. So for every element I'm explaining here, uh, what is it? Uh, kind of still code, what the, the std apply does is given a tuple, calls a function with you know, the first element of the tuple, the second element of the tuple. Uh, but for our case, what it's going to do is this, some function, and then you need, for every element, you need to use the parameter traits and call the get. So you, you translate the element of the tuple you know, with the get function to actually give you, gives you what the function needs. This is a, the kind of the nice trick for the C, C style strings. So implementation, this is a fully function. <laughs> the, first, the first solution I had, actually the framework is not using the solution yet. Um, it's using a, an older one, which is longer. Because again, I'm still learning some things. I'm not always discovering things in the standard library. And the standard library is this thing. Uh, make index sequence and this index sequence, which makes this kind of work easier. So what this does, the make index sequence, it basically gives you a, a type it doesn't actually do anything other than just giving you a type. The, the type and that doesn't do anything, just the type. So it gives you a type uh, you know, template that you get, you get the, um, a sequence of numbers. So 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, so in this case, it would give me 0, 1, 2, 3, right? And as you see, this is not used for anything. It's just so I can actually get the sequence. And, and this is just a helper to then allow me to expand, to unpack the, the tuple. So the previous version I had it was actually two slides. This one is way shorter. Again, type safe, uh, because you build, you, you build the, the necessary blocks. Um, if, you try, if you try to call uh, anything invalid, it will just give you a static assert. If any of the parameters are running valid, um, so um, expanding from the previous example, serialize, serialize, and then just um, calling full bar 
with that tuple. So similar to the STD apply. So back to the beginning. Uh, we're almost done actually, I'm going fast. <laughs> Uh, this is the first the first uh, example I showed. Um, this is the bit I couldn't get could get rid of, so the preprocessor I couldn't figure out uh, any way to make it easier. Um, it's kind of like uh, the glue code for everything. So what that what this what this does is um, I'm abusing the preprocessor in a way that I define this. So uh, this is easy enough, you know. Just uh, you tell uh, you tell it what what class to you want to work with. Uh, you define um, the functions you want to support. You don't need to say anything about them. The building blocks we did before, parameter traits, they figure out everything. If it's a function, if function is valid, if you say, for example, if you put here uh, some function which support which requires some parameter which you don't support, if you try to put it here, it doesn't compile. Uh, it gives you an error. Um, so type safe. Um, again, what this does inside is you, you have this <coughs> macro. Uh, this is not defined, right? So when you do this, if this is not defined, the preprocessor basically hangs hang, hangs on to this without expanding, right? So it doesn't do anything with this. Just uh, uh, just remember this, and then internally I kind of use this over two passes to generate uh, something a bit complex. So this is a kind of a bare bones of what this interface uh, thing would do. Uh, it's not it's not the full the full thing, but it's it's kind of gives you an idea. Uh, so it kind of does this, right? Um, makes two passes. The first pass creates the IDs for the RPCs, just sequential, uh, starting with zero. Um, the framework actually has a couple of things here, like uh, internal uh, RPCs. Uh, so first pass creates this, second pass uh, registers the RPCs. And this is kind of where you end up using all the, the little things we, we did uh, to make sure everything is valid. You, you use type erasure to kind of hide away um, the, um, the details. Uh, I'm not sure if this would be fully functional, but it just shows you kind of what I'm doing. Um, type erasure, so you, have the, uh, you just use this lambda, uh, which is hiding everything. Uh, so the, as you see, uh, the interface doesn't say anything about the function that's that's hidden in, inside. Um, so in this case, the dispatcher, the, this vector is kind of the server side. Uh, so you receive data, you see, you receive the payload for an RPC. Uh, you hide the details. Uh, you just tell them, okay, I have this uh, calculator object. I'm, g I'm getting data from this stream and I want the result on this one. So it doesn't know anything about the function because you, you hit the details. And, and then, and serializing and calling it is as simple as this with, all, with everything we did before. Uh, any type that's supported. Uh, what makes the API easy to use is uh, you know, just this macro hides everything. Uh, what you what you can do with it. Um, this is up to the user. That's why I'm, I, I said that uh, it's not really within this talk. Is uh, the way you put your framework together is up to you, right? So this from this object, on my case, I can figure out what type I'm dealing with. Uh, I know the function. So knowing the knowing the to remember this is a macro, right? So internally. This can be a string, whatever you want. You just pass the name here. Uh, in my case, this is both the ID and the method. Um, uh, so I can just map things and the parameters. Uh, so what this is doing here, let's see. Uh, yeah, so this, at the, up to this point, the macro puts the data together, the payload, and headers, whatever you need uh, for the RPC. It doesn't doesn't actually send it, doesn't submit anything, uh, because you need to decide what you want to do with the reply, right? Because in, the, in my case, I'm allowing uh, handling the result in two ways. Um, in this case, dot future means, okay, I want to handle with the future, but it's gonna block. Uh, dot get, 
for the future. This kind of double, but this is .get for the future, .get for a, uh, a type I use, which is this. So an RPC call gives me a uh, gives me a result uh, of t, right? So I can handle. So I can handle. Um, okay, it's a success. It's an exception. The, 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 this can actually catch exceptions on the server, uh, send them back to the client, or it's an abort, like the, you know, disconnected. Uh, this is kind of what it's doing up there, the steps. So the macro gives you an object. Um, you call FT because you want it to handle with the future, get the, you know, the, the, the actual RPC result, and then get the value. And this is my favorite asynchronous handling. Uh, again, at this point, that it's that's where it submits. So dot and you pick. Okay, I want to handle with an asynchronous asynchronous handler. Uh, as you see, the result of int dot get, and that's it, pretty much. Things not explained. <laughs> that's the details. Uh, what I showed here is mostly the building blocks, right? And then all you want, all you want to handle the transport, um, the you know putting together the session or connection. Like if anyone is familiar with Azure, right? You we probably have pro you probably had the problem, probably had the problem of dealing with the lifetime issues with the synchronous handlers. And uh, in, in Azure, the the guy, the author actually has talks just about that, just how to deal with the lifetime management. Um, so that's up to you. Um, my framework tries not to guess. Uh, it's kind of similar to Azure. It's up to you to make sure the objects uh, stay alive while there are pending uh, pending handlers. Um, so I have a couple of classes then that I didn't actually mention here, just building on the rest. But mostly, that table that gets generated hides most of the details. Uh, make sure make sure everything works. So what I'm going to do in the future, I'm um, going to keep improving the framework mostly as an experiment. Uh, see how much I can push, push C++. Uh, upcoming reflection, I don't know when that, when that is coming. So I'm, I'm curious what I'm going to be able to do with that. Maybe I would love to get, a, get away with, the, uh, with not, need, not needing the, the, all those tricks with the preprocessor. This one, uh, you mentioned it before. <laughs> So this is awesome. I actually saw it a couple of days ago, the, the new talk from Herb Sutter. Uh, it's quite new, so it kind of gives you a, a, a way to tap into how the compiler is actually seeing the code. So it allows you to, I call it scripting for the compiler. <laughs> I guess that might be the best way to put it. Uh, so that might be interesting to create RPC interfaces. The, the framework uses this transport. It's based on the tra this tra transport. This is also a library I created. Um, it's a really small library, just with this Azure-like interface. Um, very similar. It has the concept of a service, uh, synchronous sockets, um, but it's just one header file. So it's way more limited than Azure, of course. Uh, just one one header file. Uh, Windows and Linux. Some links um, for my stuff, of course. Uh, another funny thing is, I had no idea it would be here. <laughs> so I'm using CLI and, uh, on Linux. Uh, you wanted to ask something, was it? Did you raise your hand? No. No, no. no. Um, so I'm using CLI on Linux uh, just to port the code. So my thing, I got a free license, open source. <laughs> open source project, they give you a free license if you're doing open source. Uh, the little game I'm working with, uh, I'm working on couple of years and that's it any questions oh you sorry you wanted to see the um, how I'm dealing with the uh, with the, so I'll go back to you with the, the objects like on the server side yeah. was it um, so let's go back to the first one uh, you can do it in two ways in this case um, uh, oh, title. <laughs> yeah so the the object doesn't need to know about RPCs you can make it, you know, you can extend from some RPC uh, server class if you want to kind of make helper classes, right? But you don't need to know, doesn't need to know about anything. So what the server is doing is, you have your own instance, ah, right? Yeah, yeah, and then again, this is how, how you want to put up your, your framework. So 
uh, in my case, you know, I, I can just pass an instance, you know, what port to listen on. But you can either make it uh, like uh, on its own like this, doesn't need to know anything about RPCs, or you can just inherit and make it on itself a server, so it's RPC aware. Uh, any, uh, any more questions? What, what, what was? Uh, how do you know like uh, binary compatibility between different versions? You don't. That's why I said. <laughs> that's why I said my needs. <laughs> Actually, it was on the notes, but I don't have my notes, so I forgot to mention it. So this is only. I only use this for the backend. I don't use it for the persistent storage or anything, right? So if I change one component, I'm, component, I'm going to be compiling everything, right? So I don't have different versions, right? I don't need, uh, I don't need that. Um, but yeah, that's a good point. I had it on my notes, but I, I, I can't see the notes. <laughs> uh, so I don't, I don't need that. Any, anything else? Uh, can, could you go back to the complete example slide? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's one. You said that in the first pass, you don't have that macro defined, right? No, this is not fine. Yeah, so I might have got this wrong, but you have to do, you have to manually configure the, the second pass for this to work in order to generate the... Yeah, I'm not showing this here. So okay. this, what this does internally, um, I, oh, I forgot to mention. <coughs> this, I made a C++ article last year about this framework, right? Uh, so in the article, it's on my website. The article, I go through all that, those details. Or you can just look at the source code on, the, on GitHub. Uh, but what this does, um, so the first pass defines this to generate the enums, and then expands this. And then undefines this, defines it to do something else, which is the register RPC, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then does the second pass. So it kind of defines this once, expands, defines with something else, expands. But you can look at the article or the GitHub, okay. and you'll see. It's just, it's just too much code to show here. Anything else? So, oh. how do you find the compile time over here? Uh, acceptable, <laughs> not perfect. <laughs> if if you if you if you use precompiled errors, it's fine. Um, and um, some people some people mention the case that oh, but I don't want my client to know about the server code, right? It doesn't need to, right? So in this case, uh, for the server, the, both the server and the client, they need to see this, right? And they know, they, they both see the implementation, but it doesn't need to, right? You can put just the interface, right? You can make, okay, uh, I'm going to have an RPC interface, which is just called calc interface, right? Which you put in a header file. So you would put this in a header file, right? This is interface, this is kind of the definition, right? And you don't have an implementation. And then the server would have calc, public, calc interface. So the server would be implementing the RPC interface. So you, you can just easily put this on a header and then use precompiled headers. And it's not perfect. But if you can deal with boost, you can probably deal with this. <laughs> um, anything else? Are you, are you always able to provide use, quite useful error messages when uh, most of the time, yes, uh, because we are doing the static asserts as soon as possible. Again, I'm not showing all the details in here, uh, but this case, for example, right? Uh, the, um, let me think. One of the classes I'm not showing, which is the class that deals... The class, basically, this ends up calling uh, some helper functions to pack the payload, right? And that helper function, that's what I said when the framework is using the building block. So the framework is going to be uh, checking the traits if everything is valid, right? So as soon as this macro tries to use the function to, to put the payload together, uh, that function makes checks if everything is valid. So most of the time you can easily figure out, uh, it just tells you, okay, this function can't be used as RPCs because it has invalid types. Um, so it's not the typical compiler stack. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.